Bismillah, Rahman the Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu. Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Sadallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa la alihi wa sabbihi ajma'in. Amu ba'd. With Allah's name, with God's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. And all the praise belongs to Allah the Lord and sustainer of all the worlds and of all the systems of knowledge. We witness that Allah is one, he's singular, he's alone with no partners in the management and the keep of the heaven and the earth. We witness that Muhammad وسلم, is his honorable and generous uh, servant and messenger and prayers upon the last prophet, the seal of the prophet. Do we know as Muslims very seriously that Prophet Muhammad is the last prophet? There's not going to be another prophet ever. That's the truth. Whether you believe it or not, you know, but that's the truth. Prophet Muhammad is the last prophet. As a matter of fact, Allah says, the Nabiya, that's what Allah say, that's what God say, he's the last. You heard that, right? He's the last of the prophets. Not another prophet never going to come. I hope we heard that, because I heard it. He's the last prophet. The seal, the seal of the prophet is over. Allah not going to send another prophet. That's, that's deep in it. Something to think about. <laughs> Our prophet Muhammad is the last one. And the, and the scholars, religious scholars, they know that. They know that. He's the last prophet. Alhamdulillah. His prayer and peace be upon the old prophet. We witness that you are the seal of the prophet. And what follows in that most excellent salutation and traditional salute to him, to him. Dear, dear believers, uh, dear Muslims, on this blessed day of Juma, which Allah taught the prophet, that, that this day, Value the magnitude and importance of this day. <coughs> A lot of Muslims don't even recognize that. This is the most important day, Juma, in the life of a Muslim. That's the teaching of Prophet Muhammad. <coughs> so, dear believers, dear Muslims, dear people, we ask Allah's assistance. for forgiveness and we believe in him we put complete trust in him and we witness that none is divine right none is divine but him and 
gun deserve to be worshipped, but but yeah, who else deserve to be worshipped other than Allah? But alone, him alone. So this is how Muslim always begin by giving recognition to Allah. As we say, the one, so you won't, don't forget this, and I don't forget this, the one who is responsible for everything good in our life. Now that's powerful, isn't it? Allah, all the good that we have in our life, you know who's responsible for that good? Allah. That's powerful right there, Allah, to be, you know, make you fall right down. Come to Allah. All the good in our life is from Allah. It comes from Allah. He's responsible. He is responsible for all the good in our life. Come to Allah, Rabbi Allah, me. And Allah is responsible for all the benefits. Don't you forget where those benefits come from. Those benefits come that we receive come from Allah. So we ask Allah on this blessed day, O oh Allah, forgive us of our faults. Forgive us of our faults. I don't know if this thing came loose. Forgive us of our faults. All of our shortcomings, and grant us the blessing of faith. Amen. Uh, again, uh, uh, may Allah peace and mercy be upon us. Assalamu alaikum and Juma Mubarak. And Juma Mubarak to all my brothers and sisters. I want to kind of move quickly through what we have to share with you for today, and we're going to read. Inshallah, from our sacred book, from our sacred book, our holy book, our sacred scripture, our holy scripture, the Quran. Read from, with the help of Allah, we're going to read from uh, Surah 55, 1 4. Surah 55, 1 4, with the help of Allah. And Allah Most High say, Bismillah ar Rahman the Rahim. Al-Rahmanu, LML Quran, Khalaqa Insan, LML Hul Bayan. And the translation of that from this is Surah 55 1 4. Arach man, that's the name of the surah, the title of the surah is Arach man. And the translation of the Arabic that we just read, Allah most gracious, it is he who taught the Quran, taught the Quran. I hope we're listening, brothers and sisters. Allah know best. It is He who taught the Quran. He has created man, and He has taught him speech and in intelligence. Speech and intelligence. Now, let's make some comments briefly from this surah, the ayahs, verses from the Quran that we just read. Allah most gracious, it is he who taught the Quran, he has created man, he has taught him speech and intelligence. So who is Prophet Muhammad teacher? When we study his life, his history, he didn't have teachers. 
Are you, are you listening? He didn't have teachers. He didn't go to schools. Now the, the, the Muslim believer thinking about that. He didn't have any teachers. He didn't go to any schools. Are, are you with me? You thinking? So, who taught him? That's a good question. Logic, logical question. So, who taught him? Allah is his teacher. Because history say he had no other teachers. Somebody taught him. My common sense tell me someone taught him. Oh, that's in this book. Someone taught him that. Right or wrong, brother. So somebody taught him. So Allah is his teacher. Can't argue dispute that. And what school did he go to? He didn't go to any schools. So he went to a law school. <laughs> he went to a law school. He went to a law school. Allahu Akbar. Yeah, that's right. Allahu Akbar. He went to law school. So we discover that he didn't have teachers and he didn't go to any school. And that's what we are understanding today, brother and sister. He didn't go to any school. So it's good to know, I'm just making it real plain. If Allah taught the prophet and the prophet taught us, then who's our teacher too? Allah is our teacher and Prophet Muhammad is our teacher. Do that make sense? Yeah, our teacher. Man, that's a good feeling. That, and, and when we go and read the Quran, that's powerful. Now, I think all of us, even me, are having a better understanding. When I go and read this book now, I'm reading the book with revelation, with knowledge of the one who created the heaven and the earth, everything. That's real. That's not spooky. I'm reading the book of the one who created all of that out there. The heaven and the earth, the sun, the moon, and star. And you, you're here. You're here. I'm here. I'm looking at you. you looking at me. Did you create yourself? We didn't create ourselves. You know you didn't create yourself. So the one who responds for creating all of us and all human beings, the sun moves to all that exists, revealed this book to Muhammad the prophet, and we have the opportunity to sit down and study and read this book. Sometimes we just take that so for granted. We just pick up the Quran, start reading the Quran, not realizing that this is the revelation from God himself. Huh? Shouldn't that give us a more value and more appreciation for the Quran? The other comments we want to make from this story are rock man. Muslim, please listen. Well, I'm listening to this goodbye too. Allah, God want us to think. You, do you hear me? Allah, God want us to think. I'm going to say that for the third time. Allah bless us with a brain. And they said, some say over 120 billion brain cells. I read that in a book one day. You know how many brain cells we got? 124 billion brain cells. Whoa, and I can't count to that far. Don't you see how great a lot? That's what the scientists say. We have a, over 124 billion brain cells. And they said, we don't use a tenth of them. <laughs> we don't use a tenth of them. That's powerful. That's powerful. I'm serious. That's powerful. So Allah say to us, I'm reaching some of us on 
uh, social media or something, we're not going to reach. You know, it, Allah know best. Maybe we're reaching you all. Who knows? Allah know best. Allah want us to think. Why does he want us to think? To think, dear Muslim. Because thinking frees us. That's power, man. Thinking frees us. When you can think for yourself, it frees you. It liberates. It liberates you. And Allah, if you think about this, have created us with a human body. That is a Muslim. Do you know that your human body is a Muslim? <laughs> your human body is a Muslim. Is a Muslim. Allah Akbar. Matter of fact, the scholars say everything in creation is a Muslim. The trees are Muslim. The animals are Muslim. The birds are Muslim. That's what the scholars of this religion say. Everything. The sun is a Muslim. Allahu Akbar. The moon is a Muslim. The stars are, the, are Muslim. Huh? Huh? No, don't that, shouldn't that make us feel good? That's what the scholars, the pious scholars of this religion, they say everything in creation Allah made is Muslim. By nature. By nature. Whoa! By nature. So he created the mind to be over the human body. When he's saying he created the mind to be educated and to have knowledge so that it can rule over the body and to rule over the material world. That's a big responsibility, right? And then Prophet Muhammad said, prayers and peace be upon him. He said, Allah put six over five. Six over five. He put six over five. In charge of five. Now what does that mean? That's what Prophet Muhammad said. So I, I was thinking about this here. Prophet Muhammad said to us, in teaching us, what Allah told him. See, Allah put six over five. I hope you're listening. Put six over five. How, how, did, how should we understand that? He put six over five. Five is talking about our five senses. Our five senses. That we bring the whole world into our creation through our what? Five senses. You don't know how powerful those five senses are. Some of us not even aware how powerful those five senses are. But we're learning today. So Allah say, his messenger say, Allah put six over five. So we should understand that. We should understand that six over five, over five. And we now learn and discover that those five that the prophet was talking about is talking about our five senses, our five senses. And what are they? That we all have, that we all have. A lot of times we don't even pay attention to them. And that is sin, hear, hearing, right? Seeing, hearing, smelling, smelling, tasting, and feeling, and feeling. Those are the five, right? Those are the five senses that Allah created us with. So, Prophet Muhammad, present and peace be upon him, said, take care of fire. Take care of fire before fire become your undoing. Your undoing. So now we're making a connection. We're making a connection with these five. Those five, those five senses that we bring the world into us through those five senses. The world come into us through those five senses. That's how powerful those five senses are. So he said, take care of them before they become your undoing, your undoing. So six. So I was, I, I was looking at this here. And I said, he said six over five. I said, well, what is this six? 
Now, now, a good students, good students of the Quran, good students of Islam, we understand now what the five, the problem I'm talking about. The Lord told him, take care of those five sisters, brothers and sisters, because those five sisters are valuable. I don't know what's wrong this thing, which I keep sliding off. Those five sisters are, 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 are valuable. And we are now learning and discovering how precious, how valuable those five sisters are that we should not take for granted. Am I right or wrong? That we should not take for granted now that we understand how valuable, how precious they are. But he says six over five. So I was saying, so what is this six? I'm trying to understand now. I'm struggling. That's, that's right. I'm struggling to understand what is this six. I know what the five is now. He talking about our five sisters. But what is this six? He says six over five. Here it is. Six over five. What is it talking about? It's talking about our intuition and cogn cognitive. Cognitive. This is science. Whoa! This is how deep a liar. Oh my goodness. And this was revealed over 1400 years ago. 1400 years ago. Some of us not thinking and appreciating this knowledge. Because you didn't know what the six mean. Yeah, you didn't know what it mean. And, and to be honest, until you do some research, you don't know. I didn't know what it mean. I had to really struggle to understand what he's talking about. Six over five. Six over five. You got me? We got the five senses, but what is this six again now? I'm dwelling on this. I'm dwelling on this to bring this point home to us. Do you know what science say now? That it's not just five senses. Science say we got a six in it's like a six, a six, that's what science say. We got a sixth sense. And you know what that sixth sense is? It's, it's intuitive. It's, it's intuitive. It's cognitive. Cogni cognitive. That, that's, that's that sixth sense. That science have discovered that we have. That we have. So now we understand. I hope you appreciate what does six over five really mean now? It's your cognitive, intuitive sense gift that Allah has given all of. And, 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 and let me let me give you this here number, and this here will, will help you understand exactly what this in case is complicated. Don't you hear the language? That's where that cognitive discern, this discern uh, comes in at. Don't you hear sometimes brothers and sisters say that don't look right? <laughs> you see? It's not just talking about just sight. It's saying that that brother or sister saying that don't look right. Relating to what? The five senses, right? Then sometimes you hear a brother or sister may say, oh, brother, you know, that don't sound right. <laughs> right? Huh? Allahu Akbar. Take care of five. Before, before five become your undoing. And Prophet Muhammad said, Allah had made six over five, six over five. And now you understand whether you appreciate it or not, you're making some rational and logical sense out of what this is talking about. You know it makes sense. This is what the scholars and science understand, scientists understand, and Allah wants the common person. Like you and I to understand this here. Do you understand, brothers, how precious that is, those five senses are? So we can go through each one of them. A brother, sister will say, sometimes that don't look right. Sometimes mothers be talking to their children. No, 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 that, that, that don't look right, right? That's, a, that's the other sense. They're not talking about I can't see it. They are saying my intuitive, my intuition uh, my discern, yeah, that don't look right. Huh? Are you with me? And sometimes, so I, I, I dealt with the eye. Sometimes we'll say in that language, when people are talking to you and you listen to them, you say, no, mm -mm, that, that don't smell right. <laughs> that, 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 that don't smell right. It ain't talking about it got an odor to it. You're just saying what you are saying, 
what your statement is saying, it just doesn't smell right. It don't look. <laughs> Mothers, they understand what I'm talking about. It don't look right to me. It don't smell. It don't smell right to me. It don't mean there's an odor, but it's saying there's something not right about what you're saying. And then there's some will say it don't taste right, right? So then we cover all the all the senses. The, it doesn't look right. Doesn't smell right. Don't taste right. Don't sound. Don't sound right. And it don't feel right. That's all five senses kicked in. <laughs> all five senses kicked in. And I see some of you smiling because you're right with me. And you appreciate how Allah had created us. <laughs> that, that, that's beautiful. I hope you put up, put all that together. Be, be a little patient. We're going, we're going a little, little further. <laughs> I hope, I hope and pray to Allah that you understand what the prophet meant by six over five now. Yeah. You understand that now. Allah knows. This human body is really unique, ain't it? It has all those functions and have that capacity, ability, this, this human creation that Allah made. Just dealing with the five senses alone. And six over five alone. Just dealing with that alone. Allah is amazing. Allah is amazing. Amazing. Awesome. Awesome. Just awesome. Let me go a little further. Imam Wazdi Muhammad, Rahim Allah, a lake. So he made a statement. He said, an older brother, listen, he said, an older brother, I got to go a little faster now. I'm holding the mic there. Can you hear me pretty good? Imam W. Muhammad said, Rahim Allah, a lake, an older brother told him, he said, Imam, El Islam, our religion begins with a negative. You hear me? Our religion, El Islam, begins with a negative. To produce and establish a positive. Positive. And what do we say? We say, La. Ilaha illallah. You know what we say, Muslim? La ilaha illallah. That brother was right. El Islam, our religion, we are students of the Quran, brother and sister, and we are students of Muhammad the Prophet. El Islam did, our religion did begin with a negative. To do what? To establish a positive. Whoa! To establish a positive. A positive. And we going to, to prove it. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. That's a negative. It starts with a negative. La, la, it no. That's what it's saying. There is no God but Allah. Starting with a negative to establish a positive. I hope you appreciate this wisdom. To establish a positive. Positive. There is no God but Allah. And Muhammad is the messenger. So dear Muslims, what is it saying? To us. That we, this, a lot more to explain this here, but we, and, and pray to Allah you hear this here, and I'm talking to myself too, 
You know what we need to do? We need to establish more positivity in the masjid. You need to be more. You hear what I'm saying? I'm not up here just wasting my time talking. We need to establish more positivity in the masjid. We need more positivity in your home, in your home life. More positivity. We need more positivity in the community. Isn't that right? We need positive, positive everywhere. Positive everywhere. Positive, positive, positive. That's what we need. You listen. El Islam, our religion started with la, no God but Allah, and it was designed to start with a negative to produce a positive. Now, some of you got that. You're going to run with that. Doggone it. We're going to run with that. And that's what we should be producing, brothers. Positivity in the masjid. Positivity in the community. Positivity in our neighbor. Am I right or wrong? That's all we need. You know I'm telling the truth. You know I'm telling the truth. And that's what we need. So believe we need to bring about that positivity. And you know what this is? Muhammad Rasulullah is saying? He's saying that no man can be God. That's what they say. That's how all that's in that. La ilaha illallah. No God. But Allah. <laughs> no God but Allah. Now, so if you accept what we are saying, it's telling us that no man can be God. So what are they saying to? I hope you're listening. I'm about to finish the first part. It's telling us that Jesus cannot be God. And I know they're listening. Jesus cannot be God. And I'm going to tell you something else, too. All that is telling us and teaching us, this is strong, that Muhammad is not God. Right? That's what it's saying. Jesus is not God. Muhammad is not God. This saying, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad the Rasulullah, just one statement is saying all that I'm saying right now. No man can be God. Colossus. <laughs> Colossus. Our religion is simple. Allah is creator. Everything else, creation. Colossus. Isn't that simple? Who can't understand that? There ain't no partner with Allah. Allah is creator. No partner with him. Everything else creation. Colossus. That's it. That's his psalm in, 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 in summation. Allah is God. Creator. Everything else creation. Everything else creation. I hope you hear me. If they listening, maybe better than some of you. Christian Jews, they listening. They listening. Allah know best. Allah know best. So Allah is the Lord of the heaven and the earth. And the Quran teaches that men are created by Allah to be servants and dependents. Human beings are created by Allah to be servants and dependents. Don't forget that. We are created by a lot of be servants, independence, independent. And Allah, this is how you should tell us. Allah say, and I'm to this point to Allah say, send truth after falsehood and knock out his brain. You think I care about who listening and I'm afraid of what they, they may think or say? Brothers and sisters, this is the day and time. We have to do what Allah say. Send truth out the falsehood and knock out his brain. 
You hear that? It knocked out his brain. In his brain. Because Allah said in the Quran, falsehood by its very nature. Falsehood. The lie by its very nature is always vanishing. It's vanishing all the time. So, that's, that's the argument we should make with uh, those who uh, have a disagreement with it. There are no biological sons of Allah. There are no biological. Allah don't have no biological children. Huh? That's how, that's how we vote and talk. And be strong in that position. Allah don't have no biological sons or daughters. <laughs> or daughter, that's right. Because Allah is not biology. Allah is not biology. Allah is not like a man, a woman that we have children like that. Allah is not like that. Am I right or wrong? Allah is not like that. So he don't have no biological children. He don't have no biological children. Because he's not biology. Mm. Huh? Yeah, because he's not biology. Alhamdulillah. And this is. And let me. Wind down the first part of this good boy. This is in the Bible. Now, they, I'm going to hear the good students of the Quran, the Quran and the, and the Sunnah. This is in the Bible. What I'm saying is in the Bible. That's how you put be strong, Muslim, as a student. A student. You put be able to say what I'm saying, what I'm saying. And let them know God don't have biological children. But you got to be strong in your knowledge. God don't help. Just that statement alone, they look at you. Oh, my God, this person know what he's talking about. Well, I don't have no biological children. Because he is not biology. Because he's not biology. Boy, that's deep. Because he's not biology. Not that a lot need for us to defend him, but you can be strong in your position, strong in your knowledge and everything. This is in the Bible for those who are taking me serious. This is what you go and tell them. This is in the Bible. In their Bible. But it's covered so you can't see it. But it's in the Bible. And Allah bless our we ma'am to see it. To uncover it. To lift the cover off it. It's in the gospel. In the Bible. Take a minute note of this brother and sister. Take a minute note of this. Those serious students of the Quran. And El Islam uh, and Muhammad the Prophet prayer and people. In the gospel, in the Bible, I know what I'm talking about, and you should accept it. In the gospel, it says Allah, Allah God, this is in their Bible, has no biological children or dependents. Whoa, that's powerful. Yeah, take a minute note of that. You scared to tell the Christian that? Or tell whoever? Tell them that. Tell them that. Or we going to do what Allah says, send truth as a falsehood and knock out their brains. And we've been dwelling on too that the biggest problem in this world is shirk. How many of you remember me saying that? The biggest problem in this world is shirk. Is shirk. What is shirk? Shirk is associating a partner with Allah. That's the biggest problem in this world. In this world. I told you that. That's right. The biggest problem in this world. Shirk is the biggest oppressor. Yeah, that's what I said. It's the biggest oppressor in this world. Now, that got my attention. That should have every one of us attention. That now we know the biggest problem in this whole world is shirk. Associating a partner with Allah, with God. It has called the biggest oppression, oppression. And it's the biggest oppressor. And that's what we should be fighting. Don't be fighting me. Doggone it. Well, if you want to fight me, I'll fight you. I'm just saying, I put a little humor to it. Don't be fighting me. Fight the oppressor. Am I right or wrong? Fight the oppressor. <laughs> I'm 
people. I'm talking to us. I'm talking to myself too. Don't be fighting each other. One brother, I was talking to brother. He said, you know what he discovered? Muslim, we are now becoming our bigger enemy. Muslim. Because we want to argue and fight with each other. Some of the biggest problems, you can't do a damn thing because of some of the Muslim. We got to change that, don't we, brother? We got to change that. I know that hurts. But the brother who said it told me that he's right. You can get more cooperation with other people than sometimes you can with Muslim. With Muslim, you can't get them to do how to do it to do anything. You want to argue, you question you, everything, fight, you know, critiquing. How many uh, uh, heads on a needle? <laughs> how, many, how many heads on the devil heads on a needle? Stuff like that. Foolish, foolish, foolishness, foolishness. So I'm making us conscious that Muslim, we got to come together. That positivity. And Islam began with a negative, bring about a positive. So some of us going to leave here today, going to try to work, work on bringing more positivity in the community. So let me close with this here. I was speaking about that point is very powerful. There are a lot don't have biological children. That should be our position. We are argue. I, I argue any, anyone about that. A lot don't have no biological children. Yeah, I'm dwelling on that because doggo, that should be our argument. You know, don't you be afraid to tell them. Tell them that. Don't you be afraid to tell them that. No biological children are dependent. Are dependent. That's what I want to say in closing. He might be listening to the Pope. Yeah, that's what I said, the Pope in Rome. I wish he was listening. You know, I wish he, <laughs> the, the Pope of Rome. I put a little humor to it, but I'm serious. I'm serious. You know what? The Pope know what I'm saying is the truth. The rabbi! The rabbi know what I'm saying is the truth. The preachers and minister, they listening. They know what I'm saying is the truth. Allah is not biology. And he have no biological children or de dependents. Dependents. <laughs> Boy, Muslim, take that. Take that and go out there with him, man. You stand strong on that. And you stand strong on that. Rub it now. At Tina Fidunia Hassanathan, with the accurate Hassanathan, walking there to Deborah Nah, and that is our Lord give us excellent life, and give us excellent years to save us from the fires of sin, save us from the hellfire. <laughs>
that Allah created, that you made Allah, that you made Allah. That nice car you ride in came out of the what? The earth. The nice house, home you live in, came out of the earth. All the convenience that we have in life came out of the earth. The clothes that we wear came out of the earth, etc., etc. Do you understand, dear brothers and sisters? So they had Earth Month, Mother Earth, that produces everything that we need, everything that we need. Food, clothing, shelter, transportation. Am I right or wrong? Everything that we need comes out of Mother's Earth. Oh, Mother's Earth. Now, I'm finished with that. I want to say more about that, but I'm finished with that. Let me tell you a little bit about Prophet Muhammad. Some of you think you know him, but you don't know him. He was he was raised. Look at his environment that he uh, Saudi Arabia. How many of you think about that his environment? Some of us think Prophet Muhammad had it all easy. You just don't know. You just don't know. In these last few minutes, I'm gonna try to wake us all up. How many of us know the environment that he lived in? He he lived in an environment just like this environment. And then when I made Hajj, when we made Hajj, and we got to Mecca. Now you be so spooked up. You 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 think that Mecca is something out of some kind of space movie. When we got in Mecca, you know what Mecca looked like a little bit. I'm not being disrespectful. Look just like Newark a little bit. Yes, common people people running inside the bus and everything. Hungry on hard people hungry. Starving, I'm falling all over people. Some of them a lot of my way. Excuse me for getting emotional, but that, that's how it's coming out. It comes out like this. Even at the harem, at the Kaaba, at the Kaaba, we walk in and touch the, try to touch the Kaaba. And on your way to the, to the harem, there's people laying on the ground down there. Some of them don't have legs, they handicapped and everything. And a couple of them almost fell over. I didn't know we know so many people. I'm gonna look down there. People hungry. People hungry. That's the truth. That's the truth. A lot of my witness. No Mecca is sacred. I ain't taking nothing away from Mecca. Mecca is sacred. The Haram is sacred. It's sacred. Those precincts are sacred. They're sacred. But those are realities. Those are realities. So Prophet Muhammad prayers and peace be upon him. And I'm trying to finish up to let you know what a wonderful person he is. He 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 grew up in Arabia. In Arabia. He grew up there. And all around him was gambling. That's what I said. Pre this is pre Islam. Gambling. Adultery. Adultery. Fornication. Drinking. All that was happening during his time. He lived he lived among that. Whew. Deep ain't it, brother. Ain't it brother? It's, it's deep. He didn't have it easy. So he grew up in this kind of environment, in this environment. But guess what? Guess what? Let me tell you something about our Prophet Muhammad. So they he grew up in this environment. But guess what? He had the most excellent, the most excellent character. Prophet Muhammad. So he grew up. And I know I'm touching some of you. So don't think that Newark or whoever you 
live at. It was any different from what Prophet Muhammad lived in. That's what you have to uh, have to understand. But he didn't fall victim to that because in the Arabia Peninsula, he grew up amongst the Han the Hanifi, the Hanifi people. Many of you heard about the Hanifi people, right? The Hanifi people. They were they were people that didn't worship idol gods. All those things I'm describing to you within the time of Prophet Muhammad so they settled them. Idol gods and all of that. Gambling, drinking, fornication, adultery, all that was going on around him. But he was a member of the Hanifi group. And their group nature was to follow the nature that Allah created in them. So they didn't fall victim to none of all this stuff. Isn't that amazing? I was reading that. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm so amazed about that. So amazed about that. I heard Imam Muhammad say, he said, I, 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 I talk to Prophet Muhammad every day. He, he's such a good man. He said, Imam Muhammad said this here. He said, I talk to Prophet Muhammad every day. And I said, wow, maybe some of you do too. What an excellent human being. What an excellent human being. Of, of, of a moral excellence. A moral excellence in everything. And how he stood up in that environment that he was in. That's what I'm trying to get us to see in rounding this out. He stood up in that environment. You, can you appreciate that, brother? It's a, and kept to his moral life, even in that environment. So Imam Muhammad said, I talk to him every day. He said, I'm honored. Imam Muhammad said, I say to him, I'm honored. He said, I be saying to Prophet Muhammad, I'm honored to be your follower. That's how we should be feeling. Well, that, that man paid the price. He said, I'm honored to be your follower. I'm honored. I'm honored to be your follower. This was a good, good man. That's why Allah selected him. Allah said, I have witnessed you on the high standard of character. Even before Islam came, some of, some of you disregistered. Before Islam came, Allah said, I have observed you on the high standard of moral ca character. Character and Allah selected him to be the message. I'm gonna close this. There's something man, Muhammad said with touching. I'm sharing with you because it touched me. He said, So I'm talking to Prophet Muhammad every day. How much I love him. He said, I wish we had a love, and I wish I had a love like that. And I'm, I'm we trying to get there. He said, He tell Prophet Muhammad when he talked to him. He said, I love you more than my father. Hey, but that's, that's, that's what he said, I love you more than my father. I love you more than my mother. I love you more than my wife. I love you more than my son. I love you more than my daughter. Because he paid the price for us, brothers and sisters, so we could have a place in the world. He paid a big price. That's what I'm trying to share with us and everything. I want to say more. I want to say more, but I'm going to close it out. You know what Imam Muhammad said? He said, I, I, when I talk to Prophet Muhammad, he said, I tell him, I wish that I could have met you. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? He said, I wish that I could have met you. Now, the, I, me too. I wish I could have met Prophet Muhammad, a man like this. I wish I could have met him. And what Imam Muhammad said, he said when he be talking to him, I wish that I could have met you. I wish that I could have lived in your time. That's what he said. Allah is my witness. He said, so I could go on the battlefield with you. He said, I wish I could have lived on your time so I could go on the battlefield with you and help fight the enemy, help fight the enemy. 
that you stood up and fight for. Isn't that beautiful? And that's the spirit that we should that we should have him. And there's how deep to back it up. We're supposed to love him more than yourself. Love him more than your father. Love him more than your parents. Your son and your daughter because he paid a price so that we can have a place in this world. Excuse me for being emotional, but that's how it's coming out. That's how it's coming out like that. So that's what I want to close with. That's powerful. But the man said he wished that he could have been back on the battlefield with him. To go into war with him. Some of you feel the same way. You're looking at me. But some of you, a lot of you feel the same way. I wish I were back there too. During the time, the man said, so I can help you fight the enemies that were fighting El Islam and fighting you. He said, I would have been honored to fight with you. You got the picture. I'm going to close there. I'm sure that all of you understand every word that I said. I ain't speaking French or Polish. A little Arabic and a little English. That you understand clearly. Let's make that commitment. El Islam started with a negative to bring about a positive. And everything I have said today in closing, though it may have seemed like a negative to you, but it was a positive to bring about a positive. Do you understand? And that's why if we have accomplished that Allah, we have accomplished that. Let us Make a dua to Allah, ask Allah to forgive us for our sins, our error, our shortcomings, mistakes, and everything. And pray to Allah that we understood the message that we tried to bring to you today with the help of Allah. Rabbi Nai, Atina Fidunya, Hassanathan, Wafi Akirati, Hassanathan, Wakinat, Adab Bernard. And that is our Lord, give us excellence in this life. Give us excellence in the hereafter, save us from the fires of sin, save us from the hellfire. I mean.